Ladies and gentlemen, Taker's in the building! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> What's up? Gentlemen, how are we doing today? I appreciate you stopping by. Hey, doing hey man, thanks for having us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, Mac Attack uh, speaks highly of you guys coming out of Indianapolis. Uh, we're going to play some of your jams, but if you could, could properly uh, please introduce yourself. Let us know. I mean, I'm assuming you're in Indy right now, but please let us know whereabouts in the world you are and plug or promote anything you'd like. So, how's it going, guys? We're Takers. Um, myself, my name's Corey. I'm the rhythm guitarist and uh, backup vocalist. Um, down there, we got Greg. Uh, he's our uh, other guitarist. And Alex, up there, he's our uh, front man. Hell yeah, Alex um, is frozen. Hopefully, we can get him... Uh... Yep, that sounds about like Alex. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, let's, let's throw out some social media links for us. So where, where can everybody follow you guys at? So all of our social media links are, you know, at Takers Indie. You can find it, you know, ha slash at hashtag. It's all Takers Indie. Hell yeah, pretty easy. Let's start off with a uh, let's start off with an old one, and progressively we'll get to the brand new stuff uh, when I'm gone. But let's start off with Page Master, which I think was the first song I ever heard from you guys. Can you actually uh, dive into what this song means to you and why it was written? Because when I think Page Master, I think Macaulay Culkin in the early 90s, the Page Master movie. <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of people think. To, <laughs> to be all the way honest, this was a song I had written for uh, the previous band that Alex and I were in called City of Sunder. Um, Michael was a big fan of that band. To be totally honest, uh, our last vocalist wrote all the lyrics for this, um, so I can't really speak on where he got his inspiration from because um, I, I, I wouldn't want to, like, you know, misquote him or anything like that um i don't really write any of the lyrics i just do a lot of the instrumentation so and are you are you referring to ben from that used to be in bitback or is in bitback is that who you're talking about uh no uh, we had a vocalist named jacoby malone um he just left i don't know right before when i'm gone came out okay uh It'll make the interview better if I boot alex because he's not doing anything and it'll make you guys full full size is that is that okay yeah, yeah, that's fine. fine. I don't I don't want him to get pissed off at me, but <laughs> uh so let's let's do that real quick. We'll remove him for a second, and that should full size you guys correctly. Takers with Page Master. And do you still do you guys still play this one? I know you said it was a different vocalist, but do you still is this one still like worked into the set? Yeah, we still play this song. Um Corey just kind of takes so technically when we started this band, we had two vocalists who are no longer in the band anymore. Um we had Jacoby Malone. Uh, who did some screaming, and he was primarily like the clean vocalist. Um, he's also, I mean, to, I'll plug his band. He's in a band called Apparitions uh, from Memphis. Really, really sick band. Um, but we also had a vocalist, um, Herschel Patel. And um, so basically, Alex just kind of takes over like what Jacoby was doing, and then Corey, when we play it live, he does what uh, Herschel was doing. How did you? How did you find Alex? Once, once those gentlemen left, how did you find Alex and and be like, this? you're the one, bro? Uh, he was the vocalist in my old band, of City of Sunder. Him and Ben. I've, I've always kind of done the two vocalist thing. I don't know why. I just sort of gravitated to it, I guess. I feel like the first time I saw two screamers, two separate vocalists, was the number 12 looks like you. Are you familiar with them? No, I've never heard of them before. They're like a, a hardcore, I don't really know how to describe it, but they 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 were the first band that I can recall uh, from way back when that had uh, two screaming vocalists. But uh, let's jam a little more Page Master. Don't worry, I've got some funny questions for you guys, some trivia, we'll have some laughs. If any time you feel like doing some hot Ooh, sauce with me, I know that sounds wild, but we'll get there. Uh, this is a weed smoking show, so feel free to bust hey man, out. My fiance is from New Orleans, so like, I'm all about spice, man. All That's what I'm spice. talking about. Yeah! This is a weed smoking show, so if, <laughs> if you'd like to uh, bust it out, that's all good. Or do a shot, beers, whatever. It is a little bit of a party, and we like to uh, have a little fun. Now, who do you go to for uh, for audio production? Like, who does all your recordings? Uh, so I've done I've done everything that we've released so far. Damn! Damn, son. Yo, this is pretty solid. What do you What do you use? 
Pro Tools. I, I prim- primarily Pro Tools. Uh, I run my, off of my iMac. Um, you can kind of tell I've gotten a lot better, like, from the, the earlier stuff to the newer stuff. So I started using a Kemper for all my guitar and bass tones, and that kind of was like, that was like the game changing moment for me personally. But is there a particular plug-in pack that you that you primarily use? Like I, I before I stopped, I don't really do a lot of Pro Tools stuff anymore. But before I did, I had a ton of Joey Sturgis uh, plugins that just totally just catapulted my my stuff to the next level. Yeah, I mean, I still use like the Ben Bruce, the Tone Forge Ben Bruce. That one's really really sick. Um, I mostly just use my Kemper for everything now these days, but I still use plugins. If I'm doing plugins, it's usually like neural stuff, like, uh, like, uh, Fort and nameless and stuff like that. But, but, uh, the Nolly suite is probably my favorite though, out of all the, the neural stuff. Corey, are you doing this interview while driving? And if so, please be safe, sir. Not driving. Uh, I parked. Okay, cool. Woo. You got me scared, bro. <laughs> Let's play uh <laughs> let's play It Takes Me next. Uh can you go into what this song is about? Man, once <laughs> like once again, like I said, this was another song that was written uh by a previous vocalist. I wish I had better an- I feel like I'm a terrible guest because I don't have better answers as to what these songs were written about. I just don't really want to like Do you want me to play the newer stuff instead? Do, do you want me to just skip skip it and go straight to the new one? If you I want mean, to, you the, totally can. I mean, Corey would be able to speak on that a lot better. Okay, Corey, yeah. let's let's ask you then. What would you say it takes me? Is what does it what does it mean to you at least? So, like, it takes me the lyrical content and what they were kind of going for is it, it's it's a kind of an assault on, um, you know, society and how how society views broken people, uh, and just mm-hmm. a, a general like second look at how you are perceived in uh, today's society when, you know, you've got depression and severe anxiety and different things like that. So it was really designed and kind of written to focus on, um, you know, a broad spectrum. So people that read the lyrics and listen to the song can kind of read into it as they will. That's how a lot of our lyrics are written now. Um, Is that way uh, multiple people with different situations can connect with the songs in a different way. I like that. It's a good explanation right there. I also like that like dissonant guitar riff on on rhythm right there. Uh, Another banger, fellas, for sure. Uh, Chad wants to know, specifically uh, Mac, who is Michael Allen Caldwell, he wants to know, where did all the Aries music go? (laughs) I was was wondering how long it was going to take to ask that question, Corey. (laughs) Uh, he was a big fan of my pre- one of my previous projects. Uh, this is actually the first band I've actually played guitar in. Um, I've always been a front man before. Um, and so Aries and the current project Relics, which is around in Indianapolis as well, um, all that music is still available. It's all on Bandcamp. Um, so if you look it up on Aries Metal Band, uh, Aries Metal Indie, it should be there. Cool. So it still exists. It's still, you're still able to find it. That's excellent. Yes. Uh, we're also being told to uh, ask about the show you just had with Convictions and Earth Groans. Yes, that was a really sick show. We had a lot of fun. Um, a couple of our friends, obviously Exit Wounds being another local uh, to Indianapolis. They were, they're good buddies of ours. They asked us to jump on that show. Um Ended up being a great night, even though it was a weekday. We had a great turnout. It was really good to play with Convictions and Earth Groans. Um, it's not, I've played with them before, but I think that was the first time the rest of the band had played with them. Cool. Hell yeah. Yeah, I had never played with them. They absolutely slammed it, slammed it out of the park. They're so good live. So good. Yeah. You're talking about Convictions, right? Convictions, yeah. I mean, everybody on the bill absolutely slammed it. Like, there was another band, uh, Sequoia, that filled in. Um, originally Relics was going to play the show they had to drop, so Sequoia joined. Um, absolutely s- smashed it out of the park. Uh, Exit Wounds is personally my favorite Indianapolis local band. Um, they're so good. They're so good live. But yeah, I was I was talking about convictions. Let's say uh, Ice Nine Kills comes to Indy and they're like takers. We want you guys to open up, and now you're open up for ten thousand people. So that's obviously a good reason to party and celebrate backstage. Who's the last man standing after the 36 pack is destroyed? 
Who's the last man standing? Alex, 100%. 100%, it's Alex. Are we all drinking? Because it, 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 I don't really drink, so it'd probably be me. But if it if we're all drinking, it's definitely Alex. For sure. <laughs> yeah. We put Alex that. Drinks. Sounds like you put that no. to the test once or twice before. I think. <laughs> do you, Do you guys sure have had four or five uh, four or five years at the conviction show? Nice. Do yeah. you guys uh, Do yeah. you guys play play video games at all? And if so, what is the best video game ever made? I'm a big shooter fan, so I'm gonna go like probably Modern Warfare Three is probably my. I was in college when that game came. I'm bi. I'm a little biased in, on that because when that game came out, I was in uh, college in Nashville, so all I did was take night classes and play that fucking game. Did you go crazy. to Did you go to Belmont because you're so pro tool savvy? Did you go to Belmont? <laughs> no, I went to a IADT. Internet. It's like it was like a trade school. It's not around anymore. It was a uh, International Academy of Design and Technology, but I did go for my audio degree. Yeah. Okay, because I, I went I went to Full Sail in uh, Orlando, and I almost went to to Belmont and Nashville. That was like my other choice. Uh, I've heard they're both really good. Yeah, but that's sick. My professor went to uh, another school that's got a really good program for that is in uh, Middle Tennessee MTSU, which is where my professor went. Hell yeah! Let's say, fellas, that uh, Ice Nine says he killed it. I want you to go on tour with us for the rest of the rest of your thing. So now we're going from Indy all the way to California. But there's a catch. Your DVD player can only play one TV show or one movie franchise. What I'm going to ask you trivia about this. I want to know what is your strongest knowledge in either film or TV? It could be Dexter, Star Wars, Harry Potter, literally anything. What do you think you guys, uh, being you, Greg, and you, Corey, collectively know the most about? Collectively, I don't know. What do you think, Corey? I'm kind of a nerd. Uh, I like I like Harry Potter and Star Wars, but I don't really I don't think yeah, that's it's, really Corey's bad. Uh, uh, it's probably gonna be Star Wars, to be honest with you. I'm actually a closet nerd. That's why Greg doesn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Star okay. Wars, Star Wars, it is. Give me a second to look some up. Well, we'll jam when I'm gone, and uh, I'll have that Star Wars trivia ready for you in a second. If you get it correct, you get a spin on the wheel. See, I think that when Alex joined, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Telly from The Word Alive as far as like his his vocal tone. Um, and I do feel like you guys are the strongest with this current lineup right here. Like this is this is a solid, strong lineup, boys. For real. The song's a banger. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you prepared for your Star Wars trivia? I think this is an easy one. Depending on if you Take get this one. <laughs> I think this is an easy one. If you get this one, I'm going to turn it up and give you a way harder one next. But I want to know. In Return of the Jedi, how old does Yoda say he is? Oh, that's a tough one. He does say in the I'm movie. I'm on my phone, so I can't, I can't secretly Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you. Uh, I have no idea. I'll give you a second thing about it. I think. <coughs> Sorry, what were you saying? I feel like he was at 900 and something, but I, I don't remember that being correct. You know what? I'm going to give it to you. It's 900. Give me a hell yeah. 900 is correct. What it landed on. Oh, it's so boring. That's so whack. We're going to spin it again. We'll spin it again for you. Yes, I will hydrate and drink some water, but we'll spin it again. Are you guys down to review some bands with me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, these could be any any artist, any genre from anywhere in the world. Most of the time, we've never heard of them before. Yes! A shoey. So a shoey is exactly... Is that? It's exactly what you think it is. We had a uh, we had an Australian band on a while ago, and they, they're called Lagerstein. They, during their set, make everyone in the audience take off one shoe. And then proceed to take their alcoholic beverage and put it in a shoe and drink it! And that's what we're gonna do right now. The tastiest beverage I've had all day. I will admit that. Uh, okay, let's check out some some bands that we may or may not have heard before. And I want to know what you guys think about. Chunk. It's kind of cool. It's like a little funky, maybe like a little progressive. What would you What do you guys think about that one? Chonkla Fight Club. 
that mix sounds really really good that's the first thing that really jumped out at me that snare sounds so good and i really really love that drum beat too it's like it's just so like i don't know it gives it a whole different vibe you know what i mean it's not the typical like like kind of four on the floor like kicks kick snare kind of rock beat that you'd imagine you know it's way it's, it's really funky i dig it what yeah you, think? you can definitely hear like the progressive like sean polyphia influences in it it's really cool yeah, it's got like a little bit of that swan core kind of to it. Um, what's something that you guys jam in yeah. your spare time that we would not expect you to listen to? Oh, mm. it's simple. I love Justin. Justin Bieber? Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. I'm sorry, I cut out on after Justin. Dude, I like Justin Timberlake too, especially his first his first solo album. I really liked uh, the one that Pharrell did that has uh, clips on it and a couple other stuff. That one was pretty good. Yeah, that's that's probably so, my oh, favorite. Oh, you talking about him, Justified? But... Yeah, Justified. Was yeah, that, was Justified his first record or was that the second? I can't remember. No, that was his first one. Yeah, that was that one's my favorite one. For me, I would say probably like I would say probably like I don't know. One of my favorite bands ever is Panic at the Disco. Like I love, especially old like a Fever You Can't Sweat Out. Absolutely. Like if you get me drunk playing a Fever You Can't Sweat Out, you won't get me to shut up. <laughs> And I will sing obnoxiously loud to it too. Um, songs about Jane, like the uh, the Maroon Five record, one of my all time favorite records. I listen to a lot of stuff that's not metal. I listen to a lot of rap. Great. I've been listening to like, I've been listening to nothing but like two like two thousand five to like two thousand seven. Little Wayne lately. It's all I've been listening to. So, like the block is I hot, Little Wayne. The block is hot. You talking about like that? No, that old. Like, like the card from like the original Carter to like the Carter three, but the block is hot and lights out. I mean, those are really, really good records. You know, you're wheezy for sure. Yeah, I would I say love Carter it. three was definitely my favorite. But... And it's classic. Yeah, Carter two is my favorite, but let's do dispositions. So it's called for you dispositions. We'll actually have them on the show Tuesday. Fellas, I want to know the worst gig ever. You guys played a show, maybe not in Takers, but in a different band. But tell me a show where everything went wrong. Oh, man. Uh, we opened up my last band. We opened up for uh, Upon a Burning Body at Necro Goblicon uh, in Indianapolis. And they had no idea that there were any locals on the bill. We kind of, uh, we showed up and they thought we were on the tour package, the... They had no idea. That was this the, the first date of the tour? Locals on. Huh? Was this the first date of the tour? I don't think so. I think it was about ha the halfway through or so. Um, then our vocalist and our bass player got stuck in traffic. There was like a big accident on the way to the venue. So they rolled in like five minutes before we went on set, like before we were scheduled to play. And then as we got off stage, some of my friends who had driven like an hour and a half, two hours, they were like, oh, man, when do you guys go on? We were like, man, you just missed us. We just got off because they, they pushed Aww. the time back because they didn't know what to play. It was, I, yeah. That is show hard. goes on, though, always, you know what I mean? You got the show must go on. Corey, what would you say? What is the worst gig experience of your life? Uh, I wouldn't say it, it started out the worst. It ended up being one of the most fun shows I ended up playing. But we ended up, I was in a band. I was playing bass, like, 20 you know 15 years ago and we ended up booking a bar show and we didn't realize that they had intended for us to play three to four hours we only had a 30 minute set um and then they also didn't tell us that the venue was rented out like the bar was rented out that entire night for a gay bachelor party so so no one could buy any booze we're, we're playing yeah yeah i mean i don't hey, yo, know exactly how that happened but uh, we ended up playing our set six times that night because everybody just started getting hammered and we only had six or seven songs to play. So, uh, <laughs> wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. So you played six sets of six songs each. So you literally played yeah, like 30 yeah. plus every, tracks that night. Yeah. Wow. That is incredible. Kudos wow. to you. And it was, You're a champion. It was just tanked because it was bachelor party. So like nobody cared that it was the same songs. They just kept telling us to do them again. That's awesome. <laughs> Hell so. yeah. I love it. Uh, we got time for a couple more, fellas. Um, 
By the way, guys, if you're watching and you're feeling Taker's music, we've been playing, please, please, please support them on Spotify as well as YouTube. Hit that follow button. Uh, I want to play one more record, but something that we haven't played. I don't think we've played Werewolf, Their Wolf. Can we talk about that song? Uh, yeah, so this was a song that was originally written for my last band as well. Um, this song is basically just about addiction basically turning you into a creature that you know what i mean that, that no one really it, it's sort of like we use the werewolf analogy because it's sort of like along the lines of like a werewolf doesn't want to kill people but when he turns it's like just this primal instinctual like have to feed have to do it sort of thing you know what i mean you just have to feed that demon yeah um and that's how addiction can be unfortunately a lot of times so glad to see you're here with us and uh have powered through whatever addiction it may have been brother werewolf their wolf oh i'm also being told i owe i owe chat a maximum blah are you guys big fans of blahs i have nine i have 172 buttons at my fingertips at all times for graphics and sound reasons depending on like what you guys say or Blah, blah, blah. But I'm being told I have to press the maximum blah button. So are you ready for 10 blahs all at one time? Doesn't matter if you're ready. Here we go. And with that being said, here's where we're there with. All right, so I have to spin the wheel. I get to pick a character. I'll do that right after this interview. Gentlemen, I do want to ask you two more questions before I let you go. One of them being a Star Wars question, and I'll start with that. Let's see if I can stump you. I'm trying. Amongst, this is still re referring to Return of the Jedi, amongst the Ewoks tree houses, who does Luke ask Leia if she remembers? Put all this pressure on me and put me on the spot i would probably know this if i wasn't like directly asked this I'm, I'm literally going through the movie in my head right now so they're they're at the they're walking on the like the tree houses up top with the ewoks and he grabs lay and he's like hey do you remember um it's her her real mother right that is correct Give me a hell yeah. well done Well done. Because I'm dropping the ball on my Star Wars knowledge right now. I should feel embarrassed. Mother. Ashamed. You need to watch more. It landed on Shuey I again. I'll do that, Shuey. Before I let you guys go, I want to ask you one serious, important question. I ask everybody that's on our show this. I'd like to know, is there a piece of advice that you can share with us that somebody has told you uh, it, and it affected your music career positively or a mistake you made earlier on in life that you do not want any starting up garage band to make? Hmm. Corey, you've done, you've done this a great deal longer than me. Yeah, you go I mean, ahead. I, so I would say the biggest thing I can tell to anybody that's trying to get going and, and, and work it all out is don't stop. Like change with the times, take the grind, follow it doesn't matter if it's playing shows doesn't matter if it's putting music out on spotify pushing numbers follow technology push the grind and never ever quit never slow down because if you do you're gonna get left behind don't want that greg what would you say what is a piece of advice you can share with us uh i would probably yeah i mean i would just agree with Corey. i mean i guess really you got to figure out what it is exactly it is that you want to do like where's your level of like, what are you trying to do with, with the band, with the music? You know, like, do you just want to, do you want to just grind and just, you know, have fun every weekend playing bar shows or whatever? And if so, then, you know what I mean? Cool. Do that. Um, if you want to, you know, push that harder than like what Corey said, you know, it's, it's hard, man. You got to consistently push me like content, push, you know what I mean? It's a lot. It really is a lot. But don't let that discourage you because it is still supposed to be fun. So if it ever gets to the point where you just completely drained, take a step back, chill for a minute, and really, like, really, you know what I mean? 
recenter yourself, realign yourself, and figure it out, you know, what you want to do. Both very good advice. Gentlemen, I appreciate you spending some time with me today. Once again, could you please plug all the social media links? I'm pretty sure they're just all at Takers Indie or something similar to that, correct? Yep. Yep, that's it. Yep. You nailed at it. Takers. Hell yeah. Uh, last, I have one final question. I'm sorry. What is What can we expect from, you, from the band uh, for the remainder of 2022? New single, another video, maybe a EP release towards the end of the year. What do you guys got lined up? Uh, right now, so, we're just working on pushing singles. Yeah, I'll go ahead, Corey. My bad. Yeah, currently we have one more song uh, definitely in the works that we'll be hitting uh, sometime late summer, early fall. Um, we're getting the production finished up on that currently. We just uh, finished, you know, getting the pre pro and stuff finished uh, last weekend. Um, but that should drop late fall. Uh, late summer, early fall, and then we'll, you know, we'll probably get one more out before the end of the year. Uh, but just following the trend of trying to get three or four singles out, because that's that's the marketing scheme nowadays. Yeah, just single, single, single. You're right, fellas. I appreciate yep. you, man. Stay safe. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, God bless you guys. Good luck in Thank 2022, you. and please don't be strangers. You're welcome back anytime. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We appreciate Have a good time. Greg and Corey of Takers. Yeah, hell yeah.